This week, we're talking about Marco processes in general. And this is the list of subjects we are going to touch upon. And uh, essentially, we are going to continue next week with Markov chains. But uh, this week, we are talking about Markov chains and what they are. And essentially, we will focus on discrete time Markov chains this week. And we will talk about transition probability matrix, transient and stationary distributions of discrete time Markov chains, and uh, types of Markov chains it changed in the sense that uh, whether they are irreducible or not, whether they are aperiodic or not. And we will define what an ergodic Markov chain is. And we will talk about steady state distributions of a Markov chain and how, how to compute it. And uh, one way to do that is going to be the balance equations. We will define what those are. And finally, we will conclude with a special type of Markov chains, which is called birth death type Markov chains. Right, um, we will start with defining the concept of Markov processes. Essentially, a, a Markov process is a process that has the Markov property, which is defined here. And it's a little bit crowded with notation, but let me try to walk you through this. Now we have um, a random process X of T by the way, this could be discrete time, continuous time, discrete valued, continuous valued, any type of random process could be a Markov process. But here, uh, to keep it general, I chose uh, continuous time, continuous valued in terms of notation. But uh, it's, it's uh, quite similar with the other types. Now here we have, again, uh, a bunch of observations. These are our observations. I have the x value, x of t value at t1, okay, and then at t2, etc., up to tk. So I have k observations of this random process, and I know those values x1, x2, etc., up to xk, okay? These are known to me. Based on this observation, I'm trying to come up with the distribution of uh, the observation at time tk plus 1. The key here is these observations are ordered, okay, T1, less than T2, less than T3, less than T4, etc., up to Tk, which is less than Tk plus 1. And these, the first K ones, I have observed the process, so I have the value of the random process at these instants, and at this time, I don't know the value of the random process, maybe it's in the future, maybe I didn't see it, I don't know but I would like to come up with the distribution of the process at this time, but it is later than all my observations. That is the key. Okay, so um, here I would like to write this probability based on my previous information, given all my observations, okay? And the Markov property is the property that for all possible choices of such observation points, T values, and for all number of observations in this sense, and for all values the random process can take, this conditional probability is equal to this conditional probability where this event, which I'm trying to write the probability for, appears also here. But now you see on the right hand side, it's conditioned only on my latest observation, just TK. Okay, so what does this mean? You have to understand that this is the key to understanding the concept of a Markov process. You have a bunch of observations and you know, um, of course, which time instance you have observed the random process and uh, you know which one is later than the others. Um, any estimation or any uh, distribution uh, computation you base on your set of observations is exactly the same with this conditional probability where you condition this event only on your one single latest observation, okay? Now, as I said, alternative but equivalent expressions are possible based on the uh, type of the process, essentially. So here you see, 
I assume this is a continuous time process, so that could be uh, changed to a discrete time one. Uh, the expressions wouldn't be much different. And I also used to be general, less than or equal to here. But if you have a discrete time, sorry, discrete valued process, you can also use equality here. But that wouldn't make much sense in the continuous valued domain. So I, I opted for the more general, less than or equal to. Okay. But this is the essence of the Markov property. In a sense, we can say that the Markov process is memorialless. Okay, it makes its next move based on where it is right now. Uh, in other words, it forgets how it got to that certain point and the, 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 uh, the path it will take from that point on does not depend on the history, okay, or the evolution of the process. It depends only on where it is, okay? This is a common interpretation interpretation. The future is independent of the past given the present. If you know where the process is right now, okay, the past is irrelevant. Okay, it could have been um, any sort of voyage up to that point. It doesn't matter how you got there. If you know the present value, the future depends only on that and not in the past evolution of the process.